Hello, welcome to The Creativity Show. I'm your co-host, Bodie Werner. On The Creativity Show, we like to talk about and show creative things. Everything from making a home to making movies. Let's face it, I miss you. We miss you. We want to visit with you and that's why we're making virtual visits. This is the first virtual visit, and today my mother's going to take you on a tour of our home, the Emerald Lady, and while she does it, she's going to show you art that's covering the house. The house is like a museum of her art. I mean, it should be. It's her house, and she's an artist. So if you're into that kind of thing, you want to take a tour of a historic, beautiful old home that we restored ourselves and see all the varied types of art, stick around, because it's going to be fun. Also, at the end, I'm going to nerd out about how I shot this virtual visit home tour. I'm going to talk about lenses, cameras, lights, all that good stuff. Now, if you're into nerding out or if you're just like into watching people talk about their craft, then stick around. Enjoy yourself. I will see you after the tour. Welcome to the Emerald Lady our home and the home of Mother Son Productions and the Creativity Show. Come on in. This home was built over a hundred years ago and we've gotten the great privilege of restoring it and making it our center of operations. This was the receiving room when the house was built, so I call it the receiving gallery. It has my art um, mostly inspired by nature but uh, there's some people and architecture, landscapes, all sorts of, as we can see, cranes, birds are a recurring theme of my art. Who doesn't like to fly and feel free? This is um, a permission I gave myself to reinvent what is the holiday season tree into the spring tree. Uh, Bodhi, my son, calls it the Bruce spring tree because we had a musical showcase, which later on the Creativity Show, we're gonna be sharing the regional musicians with you. So it's all about music and blooming and the sun coming back, the long days. So come on into the living room. Basically, I love to make things, so I do the furniture, I design most, most of everything in my home, the art, the framing, Here's the creativity cabinet. The true entertainment cabinet is our own imagination. This is the living room of the Emerald Lady. We restored it to feature the Rookwood tile, original fireplace. I like neutral, bright colors to reflect the most amount of light and to bring the attention to the grand architecture of this whole home and the art that keeps changing. I love making it easy to move about and change it. The stuff in the middle can move so we can have dance, yoga, big creative projects. This is my fine art cabinet that I did wood inlay on the top of an old drafting cabinet and I have an enormous amount of original work in there. Everything has stuff in it so that it's uh, peaceful and serene for the imagination to think about the project. Let's head into the dining room. Come on. In here, the, basically the theme is green with the celadon crane dishes, all um, hand thrown by a master uh, potter, my stepsister. I, got to design them and carve them all based on the cranes, the 15 species of cranes and their habitat. So each piece is unique with its own unique carving and I glazed them with the celadon. So I designed this cabinet to hold them and I designed this table. Uh, in our last home they were breaking this granite for the floor and I said don't break that piece it'll make a beautiful table and I just took a grease pencil and wobbled it and now it's kind of a shrine to the lake with the lake rocks and 
um, another piece of Raku pottery I designed. So everything is, is an opportunity to have creative fun. I love to just make everything I need or want just for the fun of it and because it's the most economical and ecological way to be. So in here we have the dancing lines, which is my most modern non-representational work, which is a, a good place to, to be happy and keep it light and lots of colors. And up here I use the top of the cabinets as more display for my geometric designs and some more raku and hand carved vase and this is a glass piece with the fall leaves that I did when I was designing glass for a company in California. Here's the first room I did, it's organic food and storing it in these containers and the leftover. But these are full of the, the bulk, the most inexpensive way to eat healthy food. So. Shall we go upstairs? This uh, framing style I designed for the Carpellis Gallery uh, Museum when they asked me to do a crane exhibition and I later did warblers and wildflowers and they had very little wall space so I designed this for that show Those, and then I decided ascending cranes up this, this beautiful staircase uh, was a lovely and light and worked really well here. I love to recreate, use what I have, and walk lighter on the earth. So here's some Japanese cranes. This is another one of my frame designs, the acrylic dowels and the die cut mats I did myself. And here's a, another screen and a pond table. So we'll get into more detail as we go, but this is just a quick tour. Um, I think it's interesting that one, two of the women that have lived in this house since it was built, other than me, taught dance, which was the beginning of my career as an artist here in Duluth in my 20s, teaching a way to learn to dance for joy and eclectic arts program. I like to keep spaces big and open for movement and creative projects. We'll just peek into my, as you can see, I have all this stenciled and hand-painted stuff hanging out. I'm going to catalog it, and um, here's my design room, basically. Well, this, like I said, is, um, for the previous owners, a closet. For me, it's a whole design studio. I love to design everything I can just for the fun of creativity, so these are all my jewelry designs in a cabinet I hand-painted and designed, and here's um, scarves and sarongs, and here's t-shirts, and here's uh, back in, when I modeled for my mother and other artists, and some uh, skate dancing and all sorts of archival different creative projects I've done. I love to be amused for other artists So, you know, as things are in process, I hang them around the room, and um, this is my tiger coat cover-up stains on it, so I'm always repurposing, trying to um, not waste anything by cover up a stain with some creative painting. Here's a guest bathroom that we kept, obviously, the original tile, so the motif is all about that beautiful tile. Let's look at this hall before we look at Bodhi's room. This is the outer space collection that uh, I thought was a nice place to show this series of outer space. I, I was um, fascinated with painting outer space and the beginning of falling in love with watercolor. I, did these. Here's a big original. Here's one of the first paintings I ever did, Tulip in Space and Heavenly Bodies. Here's Bodhi's room. The theme in here is weapons from around the world and uh, the eel and there's some of my landscape work and loon coming and going. So it's 
It's a masculine room. Here's the library. People can sit. That's the linen bench underneath it is filled with linen. Like I said, everything turns into storage. Let's look at the guest room. This is the Warblers and Wildflowers, 26 pieces, all in my hand-painted dowel frames. It's like the forever spring room. That's a, okay, let's go upstairs. Like I said, every space has different creative projects. I turned this closet into the sewing room. I love lighting, so I like to play with all the different lights in the areas and create different moods. This is actually my mother's mirror when she lived with me as an, when I was an adult and she came to live with me. And this is plexiglass that with a nail that had a barb on it, I etched that egret on a branch into it. Up here is more guest quarters. Um, it's all taupe and light and uh, the furniture that we made for the kitchen and the bedroom it scaled for the size of the space small appliances little corner tables so the bed platform so it doesn't take up any more space so it actually doesn't feel crowded in here um, the texturing on the walls because these walls were so uneven it directs the eyes to the texture, which I'm going to do very uh, subtle texture throughout the house, keeping the light, but um, hiding any imperfections. I love to make things beautiful without high maintenance. In here, I'm going to use these, they were lamps. Uh, table lamps now they're going to be upside down ceiling lights and there's a big one that went with them that'll be beautiful here we'll share these projects as we do them we built these shelves over these doorways so it doesn't take up any space to display some beautiful stuff when you have a small space you want to be very mindful that you're not making it smaller with what you put in it. So these shelves for the dishes and over the doors don't make it feel smaller. I love mirrors because they reflect light, especially in small spaces. They also give a depth of field and make it feel larger. I love small frames, um, lots of art, the whole book of cranes, 15 different species from around the world fits nicely down that staircase. This is another way down to the cellar, um, but we'll take the front way down. Come on. So I like to think of great uses for natural things, like this is a cool space, so when it's really hot, I come down in the little grotto I created and cool down on the air mattress bed. That's also another guest area. Here's the craft supply towers. Here's the shop with the power tools. Here's the framing shop and audio recording studio frame in this stone cellar that has plywood, foam core, fabric. It works really well for a recording studio. All these containers are filled with frame supplies. And out here we have ping pong or a big work table, easy to transform it into a big workspace or play ping pong when we need just to have a little fun. Behind here is a toilet, sink, and tub, and eventually we'll put in a half circle sauna over there in the uh, natural architecture of the cellar. So every space gets used. We, behind here we have exercise bikes for when it's too icy 
to go out and bike and a weightlifting table so we can come down here, get exercise, record, frame, chill, meditate, build stuff for the house or for movie making. All right, how'd you like the tour? Was it all you had hoped for? Amazing, fantastic. Those are the only options. There is no bad option because if you had a bad option and you selected it, uh, I wouldn't like you anymore. So we're not even gonna go down that road. Now, before I move on to talking nerdy stuff about nerdy things that I enjoy because I am a nerd. First, I wanna say what's coming up on the show, we're gonna be releasing our talks that we did with a whole bunch of creative people before the social distancing happened. So the next creativity discussion is gonna be with. Then we're also gonna be putting out music videos. We also shot those before social distancing. We had a whole musical showcase with multiple local bands Oh, it was amazing. So the first one is gonna be Elias Mokel. Keep your eyes out for those, subscribe, get ready, you know, follow, do all that. Let's talk about how I shot this. So, first off, I used a wide angle zoom, not just any wide angle zoom, Everybody's favorite wide angle zoom nowadays is the 18 to 35 Sigma F 1.8. Uh-uh, I went even wider. I went for the Tokina 11 to 16 F 2.8. Right now you're looking at me with a 50 millimeter telephoto lens. Let's see what 11 millimeters looks like. Whoa! Holy moly, you got so far away all of a sudden. I wonder how that happened. We're shooting, I'm shooting on a GH5 with a Metabones uh, speed booster. Metabones XL 0.64 crop factor. So it turns the micro four thirds sensor into a super 35 sensor. It actually ends up being a slightly larger sensor equivalent field of view than my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So. I shot on an 11 to 16, a Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter with the Blackmagic 6K. Arm length away, and it can almost see 180 degrees. Like, if you were to think about this lens from the perspective of what you can see as a human, it's like your whole field of view, including your peripherals, but in focus. Like, for my peripherals, I have to look over there to really see, or over there. But this lens just sees it. It's just on the screen and it's got exceptionally low distortion for such a wide field of view. Normally a wide field of view like this has to be fisheye and make everything look spherical and bulbous and funky. You get some distortion when you have my hand really close to the lens, you can see it starts to get strange. <laughs> right, am I still recording audio? I'm the only guy here, I gotta make sure. Okay, so. We can see why I would have a wide field of view. Why would I want that for a tour? For obvious reasons. I want to take you through the house. I want you to get as wide a field of view as you can to, to see everything. It also is really cool because when paired with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which has no internal stabilization like the GH5 does. The GH5, its sensor actually moves to counteract your movements, so handheld camera footage it looks a whole lot smoother than you, it usually does. With this camera, there's no stabilization, so it's shaky. But I have a big rig with handles and batteries and an on-camera light, and all that weights the rig down and it makes it less handheld shaky. But even with that, I still applied uh, stabilization in post. Here's what a shot looks like with no stabilization. And here's what it looks like with stabilization. Now, the stabilization that a computer puts on is not always perfect. So 
It's not my favorite thing to do, but for this type of application where I'm taking you around the house, it's fine. If you apply uh, stabilization in post, it crops in, it zooms in in order to apply that stabilization. So having a super wide lens like that allows me extra room. I can crop in and still have a really wide image. Okay, I've got a GH5 with a sensor stabilizer, and it's actually even got a slightly wider field of view than the Black Magic. Why didn't I just shoot with that? Well, maybe next time I would, because am I, am I going overkill using a, a, a cinema camera that shoots raw 6K video to do a house tour? Maybe, yeah, probably. I, I love practicing with it, and for fictional work and movie work, it's the camera I wanna use. So I wanna know the ins and outs of this camera, so I practice with it when it might not always be the best camera for the shoot. As far as pre-production goes, we planned to do lots of shoots in the house, so we've installed LED lights over doorways and windows, and we just turn them on, and it pumps up a whole bunch of lumens in the house, and they're daylight balanced, and then I also have an on-camera, battery-powered on-camera light. Keep the subject nicely lit. Was it helpful? I don't know. Maybe. You know, it's what I used and I made this, so maybe you can get something from it. Let me know. I have a challenge for you. If you can say, she sells seashells by the seashore 10 times fast, perfectly, then you don't have to subscribe. But if you cannot, you must subscribe. Okay? Here we go. Here, here we go. Follow along. She sells seashells by the seashore. 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 Okay, come on. Subscribe, all right? Just for that, if nothing else. Like it, subscribe, hit the bell, follow us on our social media. That's all I got. See you next time.